Yo, what is up everybody? It is your boy Skywalker OG coming at you with some more Rise of Kingdoms content and today we are going to be discussing this new 5v5 map, trying to give you some tips on this game mode and you know hopefully it'll help you you know win your matches and there's some tips that I do have that I haven't seen in other videos that I have seen come out already in this game mode. So we will try to go over those and um yeah let's go ahead and get into it um for one i personally believe that fast fast marches are key here this last skill the blue skill for the march speed is very very key because rotation is the name of the game for um this 5v5 map you need to be able to rotate better than the enemy team um, or you need to hold down at least three spots better than the enemy team so let's go ahead and discuss this bar here. You see that we have a little ticking bar over here going from red to, bl to blue. Now, I don't do that because I didn't notice it, but biggest tip I can give you is make sure that this white bar goes all the way over to your side. That's You see how it's in the neutral zone, now it's in the blue. I leave this area, I should have let it tick all the way over to the blue side before I left, like all the way to the end, because that means it's going to take the enemy longer to recapture it. Oh, okay, I do come back and um, recapture it, never mind. See, that little white bar is how long it's actually going to take them to recap. So if you go around flipping all of them, even if you're using your one troop march, you need to make sure that you're recapturing them all the way to your side. So it does take the enemy team a little bit more of an investment to, to reflip the structure, especially if they're trying to just use fast cav marches to go around. Now, if you're able to hold the enemy's point, that's a very, very, very strong st strategic position, but you do have to understand that eventually, or a good team will just gather up in their base and then come out in force and, you know, give you the pay pay. So be careful for that. For every fight, you have this morale gauge, which is the blue gauge on your marches. When that gauge is all the way gone, it doesn't matter what your health is. You really, really should get out of the fight because that means you are taking the, um, what is it? The, uh, your troops counter. So like, uh, archers and ar archers versus infantry, um, calves versus archers, all, um, infantry versus calves you're getting that um counter stacked onto you and it's going to debuff your damage it says that inside of the game rules once your morale is down your march your marches do reduce the amount of damage so make sure that you are pulling back your march that does have the um red bar on morale that way you are doing the most damage that you possibly can it will regenerate as you um, knock out opponents or as more allies come around you or as you march away it will regenerate as, on its own after you're out of combat but again if anybody counters your troops then with a like if i'm using all calves here if there was an infantry marches on me you will see my morale go down really 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 fast now the reason why I'm staying on this point guys is just to keep them busy on their structures. As you see we have four flags here. It doesn't even matter if I go down. Obviously you don't want to go down. But we do have a tip for you if you do lose one of your marches. A little bit further on into this video you will see me use it to the full advantage. When you start getting red obviously book it out of there. Pop your little blue march, uh, march speed buff to get the heck out of there. Uh, try not to... Like I said, try not to have your marches smashed. It's not the end of it if you do, but it is like a 60 second, actually it is a 60 second reset. So you are out of the game for a minute, which is a big, big deal to your team. When you're running through this top side now, you do get um, small field vision. You get a field vision debuff, you get a march speed debuff, you get a defense debuff when you're inside of this uh forest area it's the same for the bottom once you go through the bogs you'll get a um march speed debuff if you go through the um forest in the bottom then it'll give you a defense debuff now you always want to fight around your your flags that you have uh, captured or your structures that you have captured and the reason for that being is for one because if the enemy gets inside of it they're going to recapture it but for two you get a buff inside of your little structure areas you will see when you stand in there you march through them you will get a um, nice little buff 
that comes up so that is going to help you obviously you do see the debuff of the field vision now you see on my all units march speed whenever i go through the structure once you go through the structures you get a buff so you always want to fight inside of them guys remember that keep that in mind it is key the strategies for this game is honestly like just about any other three lane moba you can go um one three one you can go uh two three and then ignore one or go two three and send literally one troop to the top there's all kinds of different strategies that really bring this um game mode to an interesting point i think lilith should leave this game mode open honestly and just change out the maps but again here you see that we're having a fight in the middle but it never flips and that is because if you have more troops inside the structure than the enemy you will tick over faster to your side than the enemy and if obviously if it's already under your control and the enemy comes in there and you still have more marches inside it doesn't matter that bar will not go over to the enemy's side because you do have the advantage of the marches inside of there i do recommend keeping an eye on that bar though as if you do have obviously 10 marches inside of that structure or 12 marches whatever it is and you only have eight or the enemy has 10 12 and you only have eight or seven obviously you might want to pay attention and take that fight at your discretion i do recommend whenever you are using full calves full infantry or full, full archers and that honestly i think is the best route to go but i do recommend whenever you're using them that you use the talent that goes with that um troop type yeah so like i'm using calves here so i'm using the um i can't remember we'll go we'll go over talents at the end of it because i can't remember the exact names of it since this this uh, event is actually quite new, but it gives me a 60% boost whenever my commander has the uh, cavalry talent. It gives a 60% boost to the actual talent itself. And every other, every one of them does the same. I think the archers one is probably the worst one because it's just this tower that's sitting there. But you still do get a buff for it. You for you using archer troops while doing that. Now I am all cavs, so every time I go into a team fight. Um, I target the archer troops to try to take them out as quickly as possible because that's the troops that I do the most damage to. And I highly, highly recommend that you do use voice chat whenever you're playing this game mode, guys. This this game mode requires a lot, a lot of comms. If you're not on comms and the enemy is, you're going to just get trashed. Seriously. Like, it is not... It, it's not an option unless you have <clears throat> straight up five wells that can just go into each of these points in 3v3 somebody you're going to get waxed if you are not in comms and that's just hands down how it's going to go now you do see we lost our minute here so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to bring my xy up to this heal point so we can get a heal off and i'm going to pull my saladin over there to help out with mike on this fight now, whenever I pull off my XY to go for this heal, he will be able to bring back my mana. Or is it, did I pull off my XY? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I pull off my XY just in time. Yep. And then he'll bring back my mana if you watch it. Mena does have 26 seconds, 25, 24, 23. So Mena has 22 seconds to revive. But since I got on that heal spot and I'm... Faster than the revive time, my Minamoto will actually revive with full health right here on this little heal spot with my XY. You'll pay if you pay attention. Here he comes. He's still got five seconds. Four, three, boom. There he is. There's Mina on the same heal spot. Now this works as you can actually keep one march so for one match that i did i kept one march up here on this heal spot and was fighting with my other two marches everywhere else so every time that one of my marches went down after 20 seconds the healing would pop and then the one of the marches would revive i'll send it out and then the next march would die and again boom 20 seconds heal it boom so it would revive send it out again so do take advantage of that once you get a full heal you do you do get your uh, right, uh, revival on one of your troops that is down. It's only one at a time. I do believe it is only one at a time though. Keep that in mind guys. Of course we got that. We got that finisher. Beating all those enemies. You know how it is. You know how it is. <laughs> Alright guys. Now 
we are into the skill portion of the video. We already talked about the morale in the fighting. We've already talked about trying to use the specific troops. We've already talked about how to, we've already talked about rotation is key. We've already talked about how to capture flags. Obviously you stand inside of them. We've seen that, we watched that in the video. Um, more marches that you have from your team, the faster it's gonna tick over. That's in the rules. Uh, we talked about making sure that our bar ticks all the way over to our side before we leave the structure to make the enemy invest more time to be or more troops either way to flip the structure. We've already talked about how to heal plus get a revive early. It will count early. So even if you're at that 60 second timer and you're already standing on you're standing on a heal as soon as that goes down, boop, it's gonna pop your healing. Even if your march is already fully healed, it will start acting like it's healing, but it's not gonna be healing. What it's gonna do is revive that march that is dead. So we did mention that. Now let's go ahead and get into the skills guys. Let's go ahead and get into the skills. Oh, and we mentioned that the bottom of the lane and the top of the lane, it gives you a defense uh, debuff. It gives you a march speed debuff. Um, standing on top of your structures fighting gives you a skill damage debuff, attack debuff. It gives you all kinds of, or not debuffs, but buffs. It gives you all kinds of buffs when it's on your um, team side, when the structure is in your favor. So always, always, always make sure that you are fighting in them for that buff plus for the capture and to make sure that you stay captured. Now let's go ahead and get into the skills. So I am running all calves. So I'm running the Master of the Battlefield. For the next 40 seconds, all troops gain a stack of mastery with each normal attack for 10 seconds, increasing all damage dealt by 3% per stack. When a troop has 10 stacks of mastery, all units will gain 30% increased attack or 60% if the primary commander has cavalry or leadership talent for 20 seconds. So I'm using all calves, so I'm going to get a 60 percent increased attack buff off of this skill this is why i am using it on my um cav account and then the archer one i like this one because you can set up in that top lane where it's very very limited vision you can set up towers inside of it and like put them around in three different corners and it actually is pretty fun to watch them trying to find those towers while they're just getting pew 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 shoot shot at but it's really not all that much damage um, coming out from the towers. You will get swarmed down at least when your marches will die every single time on a 3v3 situation. They will find your tower and they will nuke out at least one of them. And most likely they will bring up more than just 3v3 troops. But let's go ahead and get into it all out. It allows your troops to change to a tower. Now, whenever you do this, you're gonna have to click on the tower button or click on your march click on the little icon and then It'll take you 10 seconds to actually set up into an actual tower and then you start pew pew and people so it's <clears throat> It'll change into an arrow tower dealing direct damage to a nearby enemy troop once every two seconds Damage factor 1000 troops will remain in an arrow state until actively changed by the governor. So if you click on it, just like how you turn it into a tower, you click on it and then you go to the icon and you turn it out of a tower, it still takes time to dismantle the tower. Tap on the troops to see the transform button. Each troop has an individual transformation cooldown of 120 seconds. If the primary commander of a troop and tower form, it has has the integration talent the tower can attack two enemies at the same time keep that in mind guys that actually might be really really nice if the primary commander has the archer or leadership talent each attack while in tower from has a uh, tower form sorry <laughs> tower form has a 50 percent chance to deal additional damage all troops take 20 percent more damage while in tower form so realistically I don't really like that because your your archers are getting the heaviest buff or your leadership talent trees and they're going to be squishing and they're already going to take a 20% more damage. I, I don't care for this one. I don't care for this. And I think Lilith needs to rework that one and give archers a little love there. But then we have Bloodlust. For the next 40 seconds, your troops will be healed every third time they take damage from a normal attack. Healing back at 1k. If the primary commander has the infantry or leadership talent, troops will recover morale as well. 
recovery factor 200 now that is a huge 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 buff especially if you're running all infantry that morale because you're always going to be trying to be the tank or getting swarmed down so keeping that morale up is always always key guys you, once your morale is gone you really need to get the heck out of the fight unless you're literally the tank and you're not trying to do any damage and you are beefy enough to stay in there then that is the only time you should stick into a fight when your morale is low now we got slice and dice after one of your troops deals skill damage three times and they must deal three skill damage or three pop three skills their next instance of skill damage will also damage up to three nearby enemy troops in a circular area damage factor 500 i love aoe <coughs> in this game mode but the slice and dice does not it, you usually nuke out like if you run into a 3v3 situation you nuke them out before you can even get to your third skill most of the time but even even so i think relentless strike is a better choice or even vengeful strike so relentless strikes you get for the next 40 seconds your troops make two normal attacks <coughs> jeez what the heck sorry guys i guess i got a cold coming on for the next 40 seconds, your troops make two normal attacks per turn. So I really love that one. It helps me get my rage out and get my skills out a lot quicker. Each time your troops lose 5% of their units, they deal skill damage to all nearby out enemies. Damage factor 500 and take 15% reduced damage for 3 seconds. Vengeful Strike is a very, very good one because it is a passive skill as well. And of course, it is has that little AOE factor in it and gives you a nice 15% damage um reduction taken i use lead the charge personally for my marches right now because i like to taunt people onto my attila takeda <clears throat> so lead the charge it chooses a troop under your command which will taunt up to ne five nearby enemies and take 50 percent reduced damage for five seconds this troop also recovers morale morale factor 500 so i like to taunt my people onto my attila and how you pop this is you just inside the match you hit the little icon and then you'll click on the sidebar whatever commander you want to taunt them onto um well sidebar your little side icons and that'll be the commander that it gets taunted onto and then we have fearless roar your troops immediately gain 50 percent increased march speed for 15 seconds as well as five stacks of mastery all damage dealt plus three percent per stack for 10 seconds Fearless Roar is a very, very good one, especially whenever you are running all calves because you can mobilize around the march and get to structures a lot quicker with both of these march speed buffs. Marching Tune, choose a visible area and deal skill damage to all enemy troops in that area. Damage factor 4000. This is a very, very nice skill. I like it for um, whenever the enemy is in a team fight and they think that they're getting the team fight, so they back off the heal with a nice little group. Then me and my teammates like to just toss that marching tune right on top of the healing spot and nuke down all their marches and see the sad faces i love that or whenever they go to pop their speed buff and get the heck away then you part marching tune on top of it or pop it in front of it obviously because it does take a little bit before it actually comes down and does damage so that's a very very nice one it is a skill that you will have to hit and then it'll have you a little circle around it just like a uh a skill in the arc that has a buff around or a like a bust the 30 players around you want to drag it over to the circle that you want to drop it onto it'll show you a green circular area and then you just hit drop and it'll drop the more meteors on them then you have on your common skills you have a heals all or field surgery heals all of your troops healing factor 5000 it's a really good one for infantry but i personally like the swift march all your troops gain a 30 percent increased march speed for 15 seconds i like this one because just like arc is at the beginning you want that hard push everyone should have that swift march to automatically just go straight out to the structures um you want to barely just tip your first structure with all your team so you instantly cap it and then you want to just head out to the middle and split off and of course the swift march will help you get to those structures a lot quicker and to the battles a lot quicker or get out of a fight a lot quicker so keep that in mind i hope all these skills yeah we went over all these skills yep to save any of the skills and i hope what i was going to say was i hope that lilith brings in these other skill trees a lot quicker sooner and they really keep this event up 
because this is an amazing event. It's so much fun. I love it. To save your skills, obviously, you just click the save button. So if we wanted to go with our skills, obviously, let's go ahead and change them back to how we had it. And then to save the setup, I just hit save. And that's it. Now, every time I go into a match or try to make a match, this setup will be saved. Same with your marches. <coughs> your skin does count inside of this. Your um, runes that you get in your in game, like in the at the LT or anything like that, they do not count. Your uh, five ten percent buffs, like such things, they do not count. Your Civ buffs should not count because I am running the um, the uh, which one was it? The um, Germany, I think. Yeah, Germany Civ, and I'm not having any Teutonic Knights, so I. I don't see the Civ buff working at all. I don't see it anywhere. I mean, it doesn't give you any reports, so I don't see that it works. And I'm not getting my specific troops, so I do not think that it works. Um, but your skin buff does work, your gear does work, and highly, highly affects this. And of course, these active skills. Come on, we already know that. Anyways, guys, I hope I covered everything for this 5v5 map. I hope that this video helps you. If it does, you know, give me a like, drop me a comment, let me know, and uh, hit that subscribe button. Till next time.